Well, here it is, the video that you were told about, but never believed would actually come. My Crazy Story, Part 3, The Conclusion. Welcome back to the channel. This is Anna Smith of Anna's Thoughts and Musical Parodies. If you are not already subscribed, please consider doing so as you continue to watch this video. And uh, press the thumbs up button if you like the video. Share with anyone else who you think might like the video. And let's enjoy the video. So in Crazy Story Time Part 2, we left off where I had I was on my way to a dispensary to get some herbal herbal medicine and I had successfully gotten onto the first two buses or the two buses that I needed to take to get there um, but as I was getting to um, my last stop where I was going to get off the second bus my phone was rapidly dying so I um, ended up ordering a lift to meet me at the dispensary but um, I did not end up meeting them in time. So here's why. Okay, so I got off the bus a little freaked out because my phone was dead. I knew that I had no margin of error to meet the Lyft driver at the location because they were going to get there, um, you know, like as soon as they could and, you know, probably write about it at the same time that I did if I was even lucky enough for that. And, as I said in the last time, I have very little sense of direction, um, just in general. I get lost very easily, walking, driving, biking, whatever. Um, and so I was concerned about that. Um, and I was just praying for God's will to be done the whole time, just knowing that I was going to make it home. But I just didn't know how yet. Um, because I had a strong feeling I wasn't going to make it to meet the lift driver. Um, and so I was trying to stay calm, trying to do what I could to get there, you know, think on my feet. And as I said in the last video, I, um, ran across a woman who allowed me to use her GPS, or she looked up the directions for me. She told me the general direction I needed to go in, and... I thought that I understood well enough, but I couldn't figure out what I was supposed to do, and I ended up in a neighborhood um, that I could tell wasn't actually leading to any kind of uh, business or establishment, and so, you know, I had no way of, look, of looking up GPS on my own, and... Uh, um, I think I also only had maybe an hour or, or so until the place was going to close, so I was also kind of on a time crunch, so I couldn't really just, like, keep walking around and hoping that I'd eventually find it, because, you know, and then I would have even less hope of getting home, because <laughs> I would have no one to ask for help um, if the place was closed, or I would have to go to some random place, but, um, I, I think I, I'm pretty sure I was thinking I'm just going to have to ask somebody else for help. Um, and so the first person who I ran across who didn't seem, um, who seemed safe enough to talk to, I decided to ask for help. And he was a guy probably a little bit younger than me, like late 20s. And the cool thing was that he actually reminded me of a roommate who I used to live with um, in the last place I lived right before I lived here because um, he was a Mexican guy like my roommate was and they were similar age probably and I don't know I was like slightly in intimidated to be talking to these strangers not that I'm I don't do that regularly but you know it was a stressful situation um, not this, a very nice neighborhood, and I just didn't know what to expect with those strangers. 
Um, but the guy was really friendly, and the fact that he reminded me of my roommate was like kind of calming, um, because I usually got along with him. <laughs> um, and I was like, do you have GPS? He's like, no, like, like here, like, let me just show you. <laughs> and like, he kind of drew a map in like the dirt next to the sidewalk with his foot. And he's like, yeah, like, that's how you do it. You'll, you won't miss it. You got this, basically. Um, and I said thank you and went on my way. And I was thinking about this a little bit afterwards. And it's kind of cool that number one that it was kind of calming to my nerves because I was kind of freaking out and not knowing how I was going to get home and everything and rushing trying to find the place with no sense of direction and no map and um so the calming effect was nice and then the fact that he drew in the sand where to go was helpful too because I'm more of like a visual learner than if somebody just tells me words, it helps more to, to see something. Um, I, so I'm pretty sure, oh wait, no, I was going to say, I think I found it after that. I, I felt pretty confident at that point that I was going to make it uh, maybe 80% confident or something. But again, I, I think I got really close to it, but I went the wrong direction somewhere, like just a little bit off and, oh wait, no, no, I'm sorry. Okay. So at that point I did find the place. And that was just a sigh of relief because that whole leg of the saga was over. And at least, you know, I was in a safe haven for a little bit and I could ask for some help. And I, it finally occurred to me at that point, that um, a little bit before I got there, that um, I could ask them to give me some $1 bills if I got some extra cash out of the ATM. And I could use that for the bus since my bus pass was on my phone, which was dead. Um, and I was also going to ask them to look up directions for me to find the bus stop because um, I know a lot of those places have computers where they can look up Google Maps. Um, and so yeah, I got in there, the people were really nice, really friendly, um, very empathetic to me. And a couple of them went out, went out of their way to help me find directions and make sure that I had everything that I needed. They even asked me like if I was sure about where I was going and tried to be reassuring. So that was really nice. Um, it was a huge blessing. And um, it made me just want to share God's love with them that much more because they were such a blessing to me at that point. Um, and so I said God bless when I left or something like that. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, thank you. And uh, so at least that was something, at least that was something, and I felt pretty good at that point, um, but I never, I never really feel 100% because I know how poor of a sense of direction I have, and at that point, I guess I turned right when I should have turned left, and I saw a car driving slowly next to me, I was like, what are they doing? They better not be about to stop and try to talk to me because that's just stupid, um, but they did. <laughs> and this was probably the most precarious part of the night for me. I felt the most uncomfortable. Um, is this this guy probably at least in his mid forties? He um, basically just stopped and rolled down his window and asked if I needed help or something or where I was going, something along those lines. And I told him that I was just trying to get to the bus stop and trying to get home. And he's like, okay, well, he's like, or he, yeah, he asked if I needed a ride, and I was like, well, I'm just trying to get to the bus, like, if you can't tell me where it is, or something like that. And, um, I, I forget all the details, but at one point I was like, can I actually trust you? How can I be sure that I can trust you? And he's like, yeah, you know, good point. Like, you shouldn't trust strangers, but, like, the way you were walking, there's some people who hang out there, and it could have been really bad. I was like, wow, okay, <laughs> well, thank you. So... He's like, you know, maybe you shouldn't trust me, but you would be even less safe staying out here. I was like, well, okay, take me to the bus stop. It's like, I didn't want to miss it anyway. So I like had my, my um, mace in my hand, like, you know, down where he couldn't, probably couldn't see it. Got in the car. I had it, you know, ready to go in just in case. 
Um, but he was friendly enough, just drove me up the street to the bus stop, and I got out. It sucked that I had to get to that point, but I was just thanking God that I was safe. Like, I knew I was going to be all along. But my, um, my trust went up and down, though, because, um, yeah, like, I didn't know what was going to happen when I got in that car. And, um, okay, so I got on that bus and got off where I was supposed to get off. Um, but then when I got off that bus, <laughs> um, I got a little confused about where the next one was. I asked the bus driver and he told me, but basically it took an additional bus driver who's not one whose bus I was getting on to, he stopped and came out of his door and asked if I needed help, which was super nice. And then I got to where I actually needed to be. And it seemed like the longest time that I was standing there simultaneously sitting because it was just like a sidewalk with no bench, but I was like, whatever, I'm just going to sit on this. I just do that sometimes when there's nothing else to do. Um, <laughs> and it was at probably at least like 30 to 45 minutes. And at that point, I was like coming to terms with the reality of what if I actually missed the last one and I could, I'm just going to have to be out here all night until the next day when the next one actually comes. And I was like, I don't know, I just didn't know what to think. It, it just was starting to seem like a very possible reality and it was not a nice one. And it just made me think about all the people who are homeless down there and what it must be like for them. Um, I tried asking a couple different people who came by, like if they knew when the bus was coming, if they were able to check, and like, I don't know, it seemed like it's, like the first two or three people either like didn't understand for some reason or they were just like too nonchalant about it and didn't really help. Um, finally, there were uh, two guys who came by um, who just seemed like people who would be able to understand me and help me. <laughs> and so I asked them. They very kindly let me look up what I needed on their phone and at that point I think like a security guard from somewhere or a police officer walked by and they were like, oh, I like this bus camp for help too. And like, um, at that point I knew that the bus was only like two minutes away. So that was a huge sigh of relief as well. Um, I was just thanking God that everything was fine. I was finally about to get home. When I got on that bus, I felt so happy and joyful. I'm just gleefully riding home because I knew exactly where I was and where I was going at that point. Um, oh man, what a relief. And um, yeah, once I got home, like, there's been very few times in my life where I've just been so relieved to be at home and to be safe and to be comfortable. And at, that night I made the first My Crazy Story video and now we've come full circle. The moral of the story still remains, God is for us, we can always trust him, no need to panic, no need to fear at all, very, very hard, if not impossible, for us to actually attain, right, I mean, it's impossible on our own, but by God's strength, I have been, over the years of my life, very much growing in the area of not getting scared so easily, I definitely don't trust God fully with like certain aspects of my life still, but I'm praying about it, I'm acknowledging it. Um, but yeah, like just things like that where I don't really know what's going to happen next or how I'm going to handle it. I just, I've been able to just become more confident and um, secure that God is going to give me a way out and to um, allow me to use the mind that he gave me and everything and the the help of the other humans who he created to 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 get there and to um just show me that all things are possible with god and i can do all things through christ who strengthens me and um he has not given us a spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind um so i hope you enjoyed that i hope it made some sense and it wasn't just a bunch of rambling um 
I just got scared by this thing behind me. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much for being here. Please click the thumbs up button if you got all the way here. I don't see why you would not, unless you were hate watching. If you were, maybe you could still give the thumbs up because it gave you something to do. Um, subscribe, click the bell for notifications if you have not yet, so you never miss a new epi episode. Because of course we never know when they're coming out. <sighs> I gotta get better about that. Um, share with anybody and everybody in your life who would enjoy this content as well. Have a wonderful night, afternoon, morning, evening, whatever time zone you are in, and please click look in the description of this video for links to my t-shirt lines just to go check them out they're really fun um one of the lines also has stickers and phone cases and a bag it's lots of fun um i have a paypal link if you're feeling absolutely generous thank you again for being here and i will see you next time bye